Hi guys, welcome to another vlog. In this vlog, I'm going to touch on another addition to my camera gear. This is the Think Tank Retrospective 30 in leather. And this bag comes with full grain Dakota leather accenting. It is the same $200 retrospective 30 but all the, the flap front has a solid hide of leather. The grab handle has padding also in leather touching. So this, this leather theme um, is applied throughout the bag. The regular think tanks have a blue contrast stitching whereas here it's the same leather chocolate brown leather this is the um, sandstone finish and the main difference with this retrospective 30 is the fact that it has one large pouch in the front whereas the regular retrospective 30 has two pouches uh, and of course this comes with their signature rain cover which can be taken and it's got elastic band and it can go around the entire bag if it suddenly starts to pour down on you as you can see just to show you what I've got in here at the moment at least is uh, the rugged SD card which is also an addition to my gear so in this I've got the second XQD I'm using on the D500 a uh, couple SD cards uh, in there so this goes in here and I'm all, I always carry with me a dust buster rocket dust buster so this is great for blowing off dust off lenses and stuff and I also always carry a set of lens and body Nikon caps <coughs> and here you'll find that I carry the Nikkor 85G 1.8 85mm 1.8G lens um, so that fits nicely in the front cover in the front flap at least there is nothing else in there for the moment and what I want to, why I really got this bag is because I'm going on holiday and for my daily use I use the Billingham bag which is over here and this moves out of the way. The Billingham bag is a great bag for street photography because it has it is smaller and it also has the two front pouches um, there's two front pouches which can hold a whole lot of stuff and as you can see in mine I've got it set so there's two a, a body can be here and a body can be here or something else basically but I'm going to get my DA10 out from the bag because that is what I'm normally walking around with I'll move the Hadley out of the way and just to show you so this is the DA10 with the Zeiss 35 millimeter ZF2 um, F2 um, lens, and so that's sitting on the D810. And what I want to show you is that in this retrospective 30, what I've got inside right now is the D500 with this with the Nikkor. Uh, 200 to 500 millimeter lens and look it's gotten into a bit of a tight fit but that's because I've got the lens hood on and that's caught itself but hang on, if you give me a second there we go so what I've done is I've set it up so that the whole lens sits underneath underneath the full length of the body and that goes down there <clears throat> and if I can get it back in 
There we go. There we go. So now it's gone back in. So you can see it's sitting in the full length of the bottom of the bag. And I've used the reinforced padding to basically fashion what's like a little shelf that sits on top. And the shelf is such that it's strong because I'm using three of the uh, padding pieces that come. It's one, two, three pieces. And this allows me to actually, because when I use the bag, I use in, in this orientation, when I can, so it'll be on my body. So this is the orientation I will see it with. And <clears throat> therefore, when you open the flap, with it hanging off your neck, you'll see that I can get the DA10 and have it seated in its little pouch, which is the shelf that I mentioned. And the shelf is such that it's not really putting any weight on the lens, it's just weight on the on the lens hood, basically. And of course, Think Tank products come with their signature silencers. So what this means is with the silencer off, the heavy duty Velcro will grab. And that's great in case someone tries to open your bag or something. You will hear the yeah, nice Velcro wrapping sound. But at the same time, you can take the silencer, um, close the silencer, basically use this, put the silencer into place. So it's basically another piece of Velcro that just covers this piece. And so now you can just close it. And now the piece of leather won't catch the Velcro. And of course it has a buckle as well. Uh, but I personally prefer having the silencers off since uh, I primarily uh, go around with uh, the Velcro um, setup rather than the buckle. So this is the kind of buckle that it comes with. And also you get, let me just show you, you get a zippered area at the back which can hold 11 inch uh, MacBook Pro but I've got a 15 inch so that, isn't, that won't go in here. I'm just carrying the extra bits, but I might remove those. And this is a really great grab handle. It's a really great idea. And on each side, you get basically a loop. Very strong loop. This is one of the best, best uh, straps, heavy duty straps I've come across. And even the shoulder pad, look at the shoulder pad. It's huge. It's actually, it's really huge, really wide. That's like the width of my hand. And it's so comfortable. It has this rubbery bits that grab onto your clothes. It won't slide. And yes, yeah, so you basically get this loop here where you can uh, catch on maybe a peak design, capture, capture clip, capture pro. And you can put a bottle of water. There's another. No, it doesn't go. There's another. There's a, you can put a bottle of water or something. I put the peak design slide in there, the slide strap. And coming around again on the inside, just to show you, let's get this better into focus. There is another compartment here that's zippered. And on each side there are other two compartments, but those have been sealed off because if you look at this compartment, it's going to be the Velcro. And you can put maybe a flash or something in there. And there is another bit. There's one here that basically gives you access to another compartment where you can put pens and business cards and all those passports and that kind of stuff. But I got that closed most of the time. And as you can see, this is a really fantastic setup for walking around ready with the DA10 and a small prime. Uh, it'll ease, this, this bay should be able to take the 85G as well, but it won't take a bigger lens like maybe the 7200 for sure or even the 2470 Nikon Nikors. So those would have to ca be carried in the pouch or you could attach extra pouches on the sides which is why there are loops. And just to... So this is basically going to go with me on holiday. I'm heading to the beach uh, in, let me see, in about three days time. So really excited for that. And let me 
close this bag up quickly and I'm going to show you another addition that has arrived it's this thing it is not the ball head you've already seen the ball head this is the Manfrotto X Pro ball head but the monopod let me try and lay it out flat is the actually you need to get the bag out of the way it is the Siru E Siru E P326 carbon fiber monopod made in China hard to believe that this is made in China to be honest it is quality right throughout it comes with a spike um, this is there in case of a zombie apocalypse uh, or if you're being mugged you just tell the guy to you know wait a bit hold on sir you slowly un get the spike out and then you stab them in the eye no I'm kidding <laughs> it is uh, uh, meant to be used on concrete in case you want to take a panning shot um, and that goes it, it's just a, cu it's a couple turns and it's, 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 it's a nice addition so that is there and these pieces that the, the knobs basically just turn turn them that way basically unscrew it and boom it's such a smooth sliding action um, very nice and a tip I learned from Ken the angry photographer is when you're extending these don't extend it to the very end let it go back in about an inch I probably a little bit more sometimes and then tighten it so what that means is you're not putting the entire weight on the locking collar so that's a plus and I will keep that back and so now another thing I noticed in one of Ken's newer videos is he talks about how one can use one of these uh, shock based uh, rifle straps that the uh, what do you call the desert storm troopers are using basically and he's got a video demonstrating how he's modified an attached uh, accessor accessory cord uh, to carry his around but instead I wanted to do something using the peak design stuff because the anchor links are rated to about 90 kilograms uh, the newer ones at least so what I've done is let's try and get this around is there's a collar here basically and this collar I've attached the Nikon strap in the middle so this can be held on to by hand and I've got two anchor links attached there as well so I'm separating out there and if I were to actually just try and see if I can unclip them there you go that's one popped out and that's popping the second one out so you can see the setup I have right now it's it's like this so it's basically these two things pointing there and ankle links and you can basically unscrew this head let's do that you can unscrew the head and when you do that you basically uh, I should have done it with the ball head attached but normally you take the ball head off first it's going to pull off oh it came off great so this head piece is attached here because there's a really great secret it allows you to flip it the other way around so if you have a GoPro or something you can have the smaller threaded edge so I will use a bigger one and then if you remove that this collar comes off and you can sort of see how I've attached it and so this gives me a really strong anchoring point uh, which allows me to actually walk around carrying this uh, on my person I just give it a tighter twist so it's going to lock and I'm going to be going with this soon that's tight and get the ball head back on now a word of caution this Sirui pod comes with a Sirui branded piece of nylon that's attached to this anchor point and I noticed straight away that the Sirui branded piece um, had only a single line of stitching and it didn't seem very strong and guess what I, I was right 
it is not strong at all. Um, I just took a pen knife and I just r touched one of the threads and here it is. The thing just basically came apart. So imagine carrying $5,000, $6,000 worth of equipment and you're holding it by this thing and boom, it's on the floor. So always test the strength of your stuff, especially if you're going to be carrying things. And at the same time, I'm going to talk about the Manfrotto X-Pro Ball Head. It is unfortunately one of the most disappointing Manfrotto products that I've come across. The tripod's are excellent. Right now, this video is being filmed on a 190, uh, 190 aluminum tripod, which has three sections and it has a 90 degree horizontal collar. It comes in a carbon fiber version, but I went for the aluminum because I use it mainly for studio home type use uh, for vlogging uh, not for carrying around so I didn't really need to justify the cost of the carbon fiber version and I have a 322 RC2 ball head, hand what we call ball head which is uh, which has a heavy duty grip that this video is uh, the, the 70D right now that's being shot on is mounted on but back to the ball head this entire part here it's completely magnesium alloy even this shelf is magnesium alloy, apart from this locking tab, which is plastic. But then the shocking part are the knobs. I don't know who came up with the idea. Uh, they are made of like the worst possible plastic. It's not high grade ABS. Um, it's a terrible cheap plastic. And by Monofort part, um, sorry, the, it arrived. The date arrived. This was toppled over and the friction control knob hit the floor and it cracked. It cracked and as you can see it's just a bit of plastic molded around the screw head. And you would be surprised this whole bulb head is about $119 and the service center is selling replacement friction knobs for $30. Yeah, do the math. So that's $90 for three broken knobs. Basically what they're saying is if you drop your Manfrotto X-Pro ball head. It's cheaper to buy another ball head than to replace three screws with, which have molded plastic on it. The logic in that is epic. It's basically they're applying the theory of Apple products. You know, you buy a laptop and you have to buy a spare power cord and the power cord costs like, what, 100 pounds or something stupid. Um, so yeah, well done Manfredo for that. So, yes, I don't want to spend another $120, so I have spent $30 and I have ordered another knob. And of course, if that knob breaks, yeah, I will. I might have to reconsider using Manfredo products. Um, or at least get a different ball head and suffer the agony of switching between the 200 PL plate and maybe an Arca type plate or whatever the other ball head uses. <clears throat> but apart from that, the fric if okay, if the knobs are working and you haven't dropped your your ball head, uh, these knobs are fine. They get the job done. They're easy to use. They have nice design uh, design language in the sense it's it's curved so your thumb can rest there and stuff. So gripping them is quite ergonomic. So ergonomics plus using cheap plastic, no big no. As Ken would say, n no es bueno. Yeah? No, no, he says no bueno. Uh, but uh, someone corrected him. Anyway, so that's on to the Sirui P326. A bit about that and I've added some little tape over there. I might put a roll of gaffer tape something which can come in handy. And so right now you've seen the most recent editions. Um, I've ordered one more Pelican case. This time it's a huge, probably the largest square type. It's probably the largest and tallest um, Pelican case, which is actually a Pelican Storm case. Um, and I believe the Storm line was owned by a different company, which Pelican absorbed and rebranded. But the latches are basically easier to open up and has better internal volume. And it's in bright yellow. It's an IM2750. It's at the moment on the way between London and Colombo. So 
It's uh, the time now is about seven. It's seven ten p.m. So by eleven thirty tomorrow morning, it will arrive in London, in Colombo, and hopefully I should receive it by around four p.m. And if customs decide to hang on to it till I sign a form saying I'm going to pay all the taxes, it may end up being delivered on Tuesday. And on Thursday, I'm off to the beach. So take care, guys. I hope to vlog a bit more while I'm at the beach. And um, I will see you then. Take care.